Hi, Kevin. Um, we got your email concerning the transformations of the sine function. Um, and this should help you on the cosine function also because it all works the same way. Um, basically, the trig function transformations work the same way as the quadratic transformations. And so if you understand those, they follow the same pattern and the same rules as the quadratic. So kind of always you know, sort of translate it back into that for yourself, and I think it will help you to understand it a little bit better. So before, when we had, like, um, you know, x minus 3 squared in the, in the quadratic function, it would move the whole function to the right by 3 units, right? So what I'm talking about, if this makes more sense, is, like, let's think about, you know, if I had y equals... Uh, 2 times x minus 3 all squared plus 1 in a quadratic function, then it would mean this, this part would mean that it's going to move to the right by a factor of 3. It's going to move over 3 units, up 1, and then this would mean a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. So the same thing applies to your trig functions. For y equals 2 sine x minus 30 plus 1, the original function, let's think about the original function and what it looks like. Sine starts at 0. Um, by the time you're at 90, sine's at 1. This graph is not really great for drawing this. They should have it stretched out more. Um, by the time you get to 180, you're back to 0. At 270, you're at minus 1. And then by 360, you've gone one full cycle. Um, or one period of the graph, and so you're back at zero. And so if we connect those with these nice smooth curves, then we get the original sine function, y equals sine x, okay? So what we want to do for our transformation function is we want to look at it just like the quadratics, like we did over here. The whole thing's going to get moved to the right by 30 degrees because it says x minus 30. So that means our new starting point is at 30, and the ending point is going to now be 30 over as well. So we'll end at 390 instead. And we're going to move the whole thing up 1. So we're going to take our starting point and move it up 1. And we're going to take every other point that we had graphed, and we're going to move it up 1 and over by 30. And so at 0 here for 180, we're going to go up 1 and over. For minus 1, we're going to go up 1 and over. And for the last one, we're going to go up 1 and over. And so now we've got some new points. Um, and we're going to, I uh, don't want to get you confused with this one. Let's get that one out of there because we didn't do the over part. Um, okay. So that point was from 90, it was 120, and it was up here. So we're going to take it now, and we're going to draw our smooth curve, and this is what it's going to look like compared to what we had before. And you can see that it, um, oops, okay, um, so this one starts at 0, the blue one, the purple one starts at 30. The blue one only goes up to a maximum value of 1 and down to a minimum value of minus 1. The purple one goes up to a maximum of 2 and down to a minimum of 0. And that's the only difference between the original blue curve and the, the um, transformed purple curve. Um, so the next step now is to look at the amplitude. And the amplitude, let's do that part in green, it says times 2 at the front. So all that's going to do is take this whole curve and it's going to stretch it so it's twice as tall as it was before. So what that means is our maximum point now is going to be twice as high as it was. And our minimum point is going to be twice as low as it was. And the zeros will stay where they are. And so we're going to do this and this. And um, I've lost track here in this. Okay. And so we've stretched out that curve by a factor of two so that the distance between the highest point and the lowest point is going to be double on both sides. Um, so from here, we had a range of minus one to one. 
Now we have a range of minus 2 to 2, and so we stretched it out um, by a factor of 2 in both directions, okay? So if you think, like I said, about the quadratic functions and how we transform those, the trig functions work exactly the same way. So in the second one, without drawing it out, I'll just go through what's going to happen here. The plus 45 means move the whole thing left 45 degrees. The plus 2 means that we're going to go up 2 uh, for the whole function. It's just going to be all shifted up 2 units. The minus 3, the minus is going to flip it in the x-axis. You're going to use the x-axis as a mirror. And the 3 means that we're going to make it three times higher and three times lower. So now we'll have a range of six from minus three up to positive three uh, for the curve. Okay, so I find it's best to just do one or two transformations at a time and draw the curve so far and then apply the next one. And the other thing that you can do to verify that you're doing it right is go to something like metacalculator.com and just type in your function and have a look at it and compare it to what you've got and a lot of learning can go on there because you're like well why is it at three? Oh, I see and so looking at the answer can really be helpful in terms of working backwards and understanding how to do the question also um, and metacalculator.com is a really good graphing um, site or you might have a graphing calculator or you might have a TI-83 emulator, which is really a graphing calculator on your cell phone, your smartphone, if, you, if you're an Android user. Um, Wabbit Emu, W-A-B-B-I-T, uh, sorry, E-M-U, is um, the Google Play app that you can download for free that makes your smartphone into um, a graphing calculator. So I hope that helps. Um, just email me if you're still having trouble and I can give you some more help on it.